Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of your Frederish podcast. My name is Gary, and today we're going to talk part two of the topic we spoke about last week. That is video games, all right? Um, if you have a good memory, if you even got to listen to episode to part one of this, of this topic, um, you will remember that I mentioned that I had, you know, brought the the benefits, you know, uh, in form in form of, of topic. Um, there were 10 topics, 10 points. There was a courtesy, as I said, uh, brought by ChatGPT. Actually, I asked I asked ChatGPT to make me a, a list. I didn't I didn't mention, you know, a number of benefits, but it brought me for some reason 20 benefits and less on the last episode last week we saw 10 of them that is the first the first 10 half of it right we still have 10 more to go so well this is one of my favorite topics this is one of my one of the topics I consider you know more important you know to be paid attention to that matter you know um, so in case you haven't, you know, heard enough. Let me just say that I haven't spoken enough about it. So come with me, join me, go grab your cup of tea. This is a cold and rainy day. This is a cold and rainy Friday on October the 27th. Um, wait no more time. Just, just go for your cup of tea. No beer today. No soda. Nothing. Nothing cold. Only hot things. Unless you really, really like them and you prefer nothing against, just go for them. Let's go. So the 11th benefit says increased hand-eye coordination. Action games often demand precise control, improving hand-eye coordination. I hadn't heard of this um, topic before. I mean, this expression, this... Um, and I think, you know, the correlation, but it makes total sense because when you're playing video game, any kind of video game or any kind of games in general, what you see and what you touch, what you do, how you move has like a hundred percent connection. It has to have a hundred percent connection in a precise connection. Otherwise you fail, you lose the game or you worse than that, you even get hurt right so make no mistake when we play games actually when we play any kind of games but here specifically here video games we're doing nothing but improving you know the ability to react towards what we see react it react towards what is in front of us okay so this is what uh, benefit number 11 here it's actually trying to say okay um, especially action games, as they men mentioned here, not only, but especially, um, because that's, that has to be fast, you know, like say a shooting game, for example, you walked into a room full of enemies, full of monsters, full of zombies, whatever, you have to shoot them all up, you know, so you have to be fast, you gotta be fast, more or less like real life, if you're a soldier, if you're someone who, you know, uh, does anything related to that works with anything related to having a quick trigger so to say and and that's it for this topic point number 12 decision making skills many games present players with choices and consequences fostering decision making skills well this is so true that i can that i don't even know where to start from you know <laughs> Um, even I would say new games, you know, PlayStation, you know, onwards, but even on Super Nintendo and Mega Drive and even older games, there's always a story, you know, unless it's a very, very simple game. But other than that, there is a story, you know, there is uh, a way to follow uh, and a way also a way to pass by the obstacles you have, you know, in front of you or your character has in front of him or her, all right? Um, and making decisions is a constant, you know, it's something that is there no matter the, t the type of the, the game, no matter the 
universe your your present um you have to make choices and usually you have to make quick choices right uh, of course different from real life in video games you can die like as many times as possible and return from where you stopped or close enough but um that you know being said um we gamers you know we people who love gaming video, playing video games we don't we don't like dying you know uh, in the games so no matter how no matter how many chances we have to do something we will always try to do that as best and as fast as possible okay so i totally and completely agree with point number 12 here about decision making um present in the in games in video games um and also there's another word mentioned here that is that is consequences um there are consequences for our mistakes and also consequences and also also good things coming from when we get things right when we make good decisions you know so it's a really big reward you know it's it, it's really it's a really big uh instigator of um of our um of our it's a big instigator for us in general you know to to sharpen if you know what i mean to enhance to boost the abilities we have to make quick, smart, you know, and effective decisions. So I couldn't agree more to this, you know, with this uh, topic. And I can tell you that, well, certainly this will be, if you're a mom listening to me right now, this will be a benefit your kid is going to get. And in my humble opinion, it will reflect in everything else. Of course, positively, right, in school, you know, in your in the grades, your kid has gotten schools and in school and everything, right? The disclaimers about it have been made in the um, in the previous episode, but other than that, that's all for for this point. Point number thirteen: cultural awareness. Games can expose players to different cultures, languages, and historical periods, promoting cultural awareness. Well. Uh, I remember while growing up, um, playing games, it didn't exist much in the in the older games that I mentioned in the in the previous episode, like Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, uh, because it was more like there, there weren't technology, there wasn't technology enough um, to bring audio and video, you know, um, at, at least not video like other than the the cartoon quote unquote thing, right? Um, so it was more written things, you know, and it's kind of more boring if you, if you stop to think, you know, compared like written words on a screen relating to the history, the story, you know, of a, of a game, um, versus like what we have today, like the CGI, the, you know, the, like the, all of a sudden there's a kind of a movie in the middle of the game, you know, like, uh, even in the, in, in some modern games, you choose, you can choose like, I want to, uh, you can choose between playing the game, like playing, being challenged as a gamer or letting yourself go, like, you know, like just playing for the sake of the history of the game, you know, that is playing easily. So there is this option today. We didn't have that 20 years ago, but anyways, uh, that's not the point. The point here is like, as of PlayStation games, as of the, as of the birth of 3D games, the the amount of historical facts cultural facts um you know um mathematics not to not to to mention you know enough mathematics um and other sciences were like constant players you know constant things in the games we play you know uh, of course, especially historical and, sci and, and scientific, you know, things, basically. Um, because some of the games, some of the games were and still are made and inspired or, or not only inspired, but also happening during historical moments. Say the World War II, for example, you know, or the Cuban Revolution, for, for, for an instance. Um, and it's inevitable for you to learn, you know, at least like 90% of accurate information, 
you know? Of course, it's a game. It's, we're talking about games. We're talking about fiction. And you can just simply learn everything from games. Of course, you will have... So at one point or uh, or other point, you will have a a um, corrupted understanding. But if you align, if you manage to align, like what what happened in real history, you know, um, that is, if you take the what you've played in the games, what you've what you, what you've seen in the game, you know, uh, gets to motivate you to go after you know actual information that is true. You know, truthful information. What really happened? You know, like, not like, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna play the game if it's not hist historically accurate. No, no one, no one does that. There's no reason to do that. But like, okay, this is what I, I I'm about to see in the game. So how about I go check on you know the real history to know exactly you know what the game producers producers have tried to do basically here. You know, this is a very good way to instigate curiosity that inevitably leads to you know going after information you know that also inevitably leads to knowledge okay so well if video games especially the ones that are you know um, set that are um, located somehow that take places um, in historical events if they don't get get to motivate you to go after history, to go read his, uh, historical books or you know historical relates from that that or this or that specific period, historical period, I don't know what what will get you to do that. You know, so totally, this is something that will even if you don't go after. As I said, you, at least you have an idea of what was going on back then, back in that period back in that historical period, you know? So that's it for this point. Benefit number 14, physical fitness. Some video games such as VR games or XR games encourage physical activity and can contribute to fitness. Okay, this is not a constant, okay? 99.99 or 0.9% of the games, you know, won't get you moving basically, right? Um, but I, I, I don't know if I agree 100% with this topic, but I would say that there's sense in it. Um, okay, if you don't like exercising, if you don't like moving your body, basically, um, the video game won't get you doing that, all right? No, there's no video game that will motivate you to do that. I'm gonna be honest here. But if you have a, an inclination to, towards it, Certainly, games will get you going there, you know. Uh, not to mention, of course, the as they they say in the topic here, um, the extra games, the so-called so-called extra games, uh, VR games that actually get you to move your body. You know, you just put those goggles on, and you have to, you know, walk on a treadmill. It's still uh, embryonary. I don't even know if the word is correct, but anyways, you know what I'm trying to say here. It's still at the very beginning of it, but uh, I believe there's a long, a long road in front of it, and there will be a point where uh, you know physical movements and brain movements, so to say, that is video games, will be connected, and that will be perfect. That will be great. You know, like that will be like doing. Um, uh, you know, mixing business and pleasure, as they say. Item number 15, point number 15, career opportunities. The video games industry offers numerous career options from game, game development to sports. Um, needless to say that the number of the, the, the video game industry has grown exponentially in the past 20 years. In the past 30 years, wow, it's like a revolution, right? Uh, and we have all the reasons in front of us to believe that this won't change in the next 20 or 30 years, okay? So, well, if you not only like play game, playing games, but you also like paying attention to the way they are made, basically, and more than that, you like and you're studying uh, or you're going after information you know, of how, you know, to code, program, I don't know the correct way to say that, but to make games effectively. Well, 
I believe there's a bright career in front of you. Opportunities will be, you know, um, there for you. I, I, I believe, I like to believe. Um, and the chances of you getting pretty much successful, making, you know, good money out of it is considerable, you know? And if you love doing that, you know what? Well, that's the, that I could call it a dream job. You know, what do you think? 16. Entertainment and escapism. Video games provide a source of entertainment and an, and an escape from the stresses of daily life. Well, no truer words are, have ever been said. <laughs> that's so true. Like, you know, I, I think, I mean, that's the, the video game 101, I would say. Like, you know, I, I would say more than video game 101. That, that would be video game... Uh, that, that, it, that would be entertainment 101, right? Like the idea, the whole idea of, of doing something not ordinary, that is something different, something that challenges your mind, your brain, no matter what exactly is it, but doing that is the, entertainment is the, the, the core of it, you know, the main purpose of it. So needless to say, the video game is, one of the best, if not the best way to have, you know, um, to have the stress relieved, you know, after a very stressful day, um, and also get your mind working, you know, and, and collecting all the benefits we've been talking about so far. And then the ones who still, the ones, the ones still ahead of us right now. 17. Goal setting and achievement. Completing in-game objectives can instill a sense of accomplishment and goal setting. Well, that's it. That's one of the things that one of the, the key things, the key features of a of gaming, you know, not only video gaming, but also gaming in general, right? But video games are much bigger. They manage to be much bigger than than any other games, right? Because like it's digital, you know, like the, the limits exist only in the head of a of the of, a, of their creators right of their producers so uh, it's much more exponential you know the, the the world if you you know want to put it this way um, so the number the 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 level of you know hardship the level of of um, the challenges that are ahead of you, that are in front of you, can simply be infinite, you know? Uh, so the number of tasks to do, the number of, uh, and the complexity, and their complexity, uh, it's, it's like even hard to mention, you know? The, the number of uh, opportunities, of missions, of quests, as they call it, um, things to do, you know? So I can totally say that, uh, you know, reaching the goals, accomplishing missions is, is such a benefit you will get the pleasure from them, from these things, I mean, like, you know, from doing this, from doing these things. This is something that you will bring with you for, for life, right? You will become, the, your kids will become, I believe, more competitive, but not only more competitive, more, you know, like healthy competitive competitors, right? In terms that they won't be challenging, they won't be competing against other people, but themselves, okay? This is what game, video games bring in general, like you competing against yourself, you being competitive, but only with you, you know, like being better and better every day. That's the whole the whole point of this, this specific point. 18, improves problem solving. Many games present complex problems that require creative solutions. That's, I, I would say many, I wouldn't say many games, I would say almost all games existing, you know, in the world, um, present video games, present complex problems that require creative solutions. But especially and on the top of all uh, of all this point would be the RPG games, the rolling play games, right? I mentioned the, those games, the, these games 
uh, on the, the previous episode about gaming, about video gaming. Um, but yeah, this is so much of a problem solving thing, you know, this is the, without problem solving, you don't have RPG games. So this is the essence of this type of game, of games, of video games. So I think it's even redundant to say that this is a key feature in this type of game. And again, you will, or your kids will get the, the benefits from it, you know, like it will help you. It, it will help you to, you know, better solve problems in a very creative way, in a very innovative, if necessary, you know, I have no doubts that this is one of the benefits of playing games, you know, in a healthy way, of course, I'm not mentioning addiction cases. 19. Therapeutic benefits. Video games are used in some therapies to help patients cope with physical or mental health issues. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Actually, I didn't know that before ChatGPT brought it to me. Um, but that makes total sense, you know, especially if we can, if we consider all the, the 18, uh, points, you know, we read, we, we've just read so far, um, makes total sense. You know, the, the people with, you know, some, with some con mental or physical conditions, but especially those with mental conditions, conditions, uh, will benefit a lot, you know, like it doesn't surprise me at all. At all because you get someone with like limitation or a kind of a difficulty with some coordination movement, for example, or even mental coordination movements, if that makes any sense. Uh, it would be very interesting and beneficial for, for this person to play games, you know? Of course, with the assistance of a professional in that area, not just all of a sudden, but even all of a sudden, even by him or herself, that would be something that would at least minimally, uh, or at least release the tension, you know, get the, the, the patient in this case, collecting the benefits from the, from, you know, relaxing from, you know, all the, the points mentioned before. 20, community and friendship. Gamers often form close-knit communities and friendships with people who share their interests. Well, this is last but not least, okay? Uh, it wasn't so true, you know, um, 30 years ago, but it was true enough, right? Like 30 years ago, I'm from this time, our community friendships would be created through, you know, physical, uh, within the physical barriers, right? Uh, like your neighbors, people that people who live in your town, uh, people that you can you know literally walk up to. Okay, today with internet, with lots of games online being online, I wouldn't say the sky is the limit, but the world is the limit, right? <laughs> you can have you can befriend people from Japan or United States or Australia or France, okay, and you will if you start playing online games. Sooner or later, people from Middle Eastern, you know, uh, literally people from all, from all parts of the world, all parts of the planet, you know, and this is so cool. This will, I, ChatGPT didn't say, didn't say that, but this is the main, since this is the main, our main focus here, of the main focus of you, you who's listening to me right now have, that is learning uh, languages or only English. Well, what better than playing online, you know, for you, in, in order for you to get to practice the languages you've been studying, especially English, especially English, you know, that is a universal language. So if there wasn't reason enough for you to start playing games, you know, I believe this one will be reason enough, will be, 100% enough for you to get it to get it started or at least to get it get it a shot you know to to, to get it a try basically you know so that's it for this episode that's it for this topic i won't say any more about it 
I really hope I have convinced you if I, you know, wanna, if I may express my feelings here, because as, as I said, this is something totally benefit, to, totally, uh, that totally benefits us you know, as individuals, as people, as colleagues, as, as students, as human beings, right? That's my, that's what I think. That's my opinion. I'm really open to disagreements and I want to read them or, you know, hear them if possible, uh, wherever it is that you do it, wherever uh, platform this is on at this moment. But anyways, thank you so very much for your great com uh, companionship, for your company here with me. And I will be seeing you in the next episode. That's all for this one. Have a lovely weekend, a good day. See you. Bye-bye.